arts. We're talking about represent representative. We're talking about stuff in your painting that looks like stuff. Well, welcome back to Vloggity Bloggity Vlog. So today's Vloggity Bloggity Vlog is on domination of space, composition. And when I say space, I'm not talking about planet Zordon here, and I'm not talking about Klingons or Ding Dongs. I'm talking about space in your painting and what spaces you're taking up in there. So let's hit the board and talk about space. So composition, here it is in a nutshell. Everybody knows doing that to your painting and putting stuff in the middle is very boring, and that's kind of the first rule we all learn is don't ever put stuff in the middle of the painting. That's the very first thing you learn. It's like, oh, yay, okay, so I understand that. That's super good. And then what happens is you end up going like this and going, oh, here, let's do that. Third, third, third. Third, third, third may not be on Snoozy Lane, but it's definitely right next door on Boring Avenue. So that's the most next boring thing that you could do is divide your space into three equal parts. It's just snoozy and boring. So. I've devised a method for you to follow that's going to solve that problem right now. So let me show you how that's done. Here we go. So design, domination of space. Basically you have three spaces that you want to utilize, which is foreground, midground, and background. So what you're trying to do is create space in a painting. You're trying to make things three-dimensional, right? In this case, because we're not talking about non-representational painting and abstracts, we're talking about represent... Represent... We're talking about stuff in your painting that looks like stuff. All right, so three spaces. Foreground, midground, background, and then you have three sizes. Small, medium, and large, in which you can utilize the three spaces. Each one of these spaces is going to contain one of these sizes, and they must be dramatically different. That is going to set up your design and your painting to help you make it more dramatic and make it more uh, juicy and yummy so that the person who wants to buy your painting goes, God, this painting's so good, I'm buying it right now. All right, let me show you how this works. Let's go back to this. Boring. So how do we fix that? Well, we had three spaces. We had a foreground, a midground, and a background. We had small, medium, and large. Let's try one. How about we do a very large prairie scene where it's a lot of grass and a lot of wheat fields and everybody, who doesn't love a nice juicy wheat field? So maybe we do this. We go here. Here is our wheat field and we do this. Like, my wheat field. So we have large foreground. And then maybe we have a bunch of little trees right here and some junk and maybe a little barn and a house and whatever. So we have small midground and then this is all sky. So we have medium sky. So that, that basically is saying this. This was our design of this painting right there. That's that design. That is exciting. That is snoozy. Let's try another one real quick here. Here you go. Here's the space. Let's say Oh, I'm going to do the same prairie thing, but guess what? Big giant billowy clouds and a big storm is rolling in. So maybe we do this. Maybe the little farmhouse is all down here. And so here's my foreground, here's my midground, and I have the big billowy sky right here. So this is large, small, and medium. You see how that's working? I can change this all around all I want. Lots of times you got mountains, you could have this. You got big mountains, maybe you got giant mountains right here. So you got big mountains with snow on the top of them. So you have large for you have large midground. You have medium sized sky, but you need a foreground because this is only two dimensional. Two dimensional again, boring. Three dimensions. Let's put a few little trees right in the front. So you maybe you put a few trees right here. So now I have large, medium, and small, but I have foreground, middle ground, background. See how that works? Let's go to the computer, let's look at some photos, and then let's look at some paintings and see okay. what we So get. here's a photo that I'm bringing up. Uh, this is mountain... So what's the composition that's going on in here? Well, I break this down in three parts. I know you're going to see mountain here, and mountain here, and trees here, but you've got to learn to simplify this down. So this is basically right here. <laughs> And then we're going to go. So that's what's going on right there. So small sky, large mid ground. And actually, you know, if I move this down where it's supposed to be, 
you'd have small foreground. Trees are foreground, large middle ground, small sky, or um, uh, uh, medium sized sky. That's what's happening in that photo right there. All right, here's a Richard Schmid painting. He is the king of landscapes. Uh, so let's have a look at this, what's happening here. All right, so what's happening in this photo right here? Right? That's that and right there. So you have large foreground, medium sized middle ground, and I'm not sure what that big red dot is, but that big red dot there, if when I take that away, that is the background in the painting. They've just put a small sky hole back there. That's the background. So you have large on the bottom, medium on the top, and then when I go like this, Command Z, see that go away? See that area right there? That is your background. He's let you out of this painting. That is the background. So three dimensions on that puppy right there. Uh, we're doing another one here. Here's one. Here's a portrait. So here's a portrait. This portrait right here, this is by Kevin Bielfus. Bielfus, I can't pronounce his name. But he's a god and I love the guy. I never met him, but one day I will and I will bow before him. So here is, this is a large foreground right here. The whole portrait that you see right here is foreground. This is middle ground. All of this stuff right here on the side and the side right here, this is middle ground. This little light that's going on right back there, that's an exit point. That is the background. That lets you out of this painting. So you get out by this little point here. If you covered that up, that little thing that showed up almost covered it up. If you covered that up right there, you would see how two dimensional that painting would be. Just hold your hand on your picture screen and go boop and take that and it gets two dimensional. That gives you three dimensions. All right, did you hold your hand up? I hope you did. Don't forget to wipe the screen off after. Don't want COVID. Uh, and this painting right here, I'm just gonna show you quick what it, what's happening here. So basically here, that right there. So everything below that line is foreground. And then this, whoops, this right here. So everything in this area is middle ground and that's background. Just that little area there, large, medium, small. Uh, so this is what most people do right here. This is what I see artists do all the time is they go, oh, I want to paint a flower. And so they do this and they take the big giant flower and they just stick it right in the middle of the painting and you have this. So basically what you have here is all flower and a little bit of background. Background flower, background, foreground, midground, foreground, background, foreground, midground, foreground, background. I don't see foreground, foreground, midground, background. There's only two dimensions. There isn't three. It's, this is flat and boring. But if you do this, oh, three dimensions. So now if we go to mark up here, uh, right there. Okay, so right here. So this is foreground. This is middle ground and then we have background here. So he has large middle ground, medium sized foreground and small background. I think I've trimmed this a little bit or, or whatever, but you get the idea that this, as soon as you put this in foreground and he drops these little flowers down, creating a perspective line here that allows you to get into the painting, that foreground makes that interesting. When you go back to here, that's boring. Two dimensional, three dimensional. Three dimensions, foreground, middle ground, background. I hope that makes sense to you. Anyways, it's all about saying something in your painting. You wanna be dramatic. You wanna say something that's gonna capture the viewer's view, viewer's imagination. <laughs> Anyways, large, medium, small, make something happen in your painting. Come on, you got this.